With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hello, everybody. Uh, There's another video for the Superbooth Home Edition. Uh, we're here with uh, Garrett from uh, RetroKits, who's in Holland, in Edam. And your RetroKits, for those who don't, perhaps know, don't know, make some really cool uh, sort of MIDI widgets, devices, intelligent MIDI cables, all kinds of stuff. So what are you... Uh, well, first of all, how are you? Are you well? I'm fine, yes. Uh, in uh, Edam, there is uh, also a way to dodge the COVID luckily excellent i'm glad so, to hear uh, it still healthy so um i noticed you've got this rather tasty product shot here this is the rk06 006 that we're looking at right yeah yeah that was something we wanted to release on the uh, super booth uh, because it's uh it's a bit of a um, um uh, yeah how do you call it a, a mix of the rk005 004 we did before and uh, it, it yeah, it's actually it can it allows you to sync up a lot of different devices. So it's not just MIDI, but also oh, right, with clock and pulse and all kinds of things, right? So is yeah, it the same? Yeah. Is it the same kind of thing? It works in in the intelligent way, so it's like it can be a hub, or it can be a through, or it can be all of those things, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, when you connect this to a PC or an iPad, it is an interface, a MIDI interface. Well, it, it looks like a MIDI interface because you get 10 MIDI outputs, 2 MIDI inputs, but actually uh, on the RK6 there is a special settings where you can set each MIDI port to be something else as well. So uh, if you set it to be a, a gate output port, then just sending MIDI to that port on the PC or on the iPad, it will send out triggers for also for analog gear. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, let's have a look at that a sec. Can you hold it up to the camera so yeah. we can just have a bit of a look? So it's bus yeah, powered, well, presumably. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, this is the USB bus, and uh, these are the outputs on each side. And here are the inputs, two inputs. So if you use it standalone, uh, you just power it from five volts from an adapter or something. Then you have a two port merging MIDI in and ten port MIDI out. And we also have a cable with it, this one, which you can use to turn it into a USB host as well. So uh, you can do the conversion like the RK5 did with uh, USB MIDI only devices. So like this, you plug in a hub here and then you have also yeah, a host for USB MIDI devices and 10 outputs together to tie together. And you, can you, did you say you could use that as a hub so you can have more than one class compliant device plugged in, assuming you've got the power yeah. and everything? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have this little hub here. Let's see if I can connect it as well. So uh, if you look at it like this, now you actually you just uh, put the power in here, just power, and then you can connect three USB devices uh, like... Uh, uh, I don't know, a circuit, a RD8, or a nano control, and then it will merge it together. So the RK6 will interconnect those devices in this hub, but it will also send every MIDI messages out to these uh, 10 outputs. And can you, could, does it work with devices whose default port is not port one of a USB? Can you select between the ports, or is it, because yeah. that's quite yeah. tricky, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, there is uh, indeed some devices like the uh, you know, the R3, which is also behind here. <laughs> and this is one of those Korg devices which have a special port, one for uh, MIDI and one for control. And the RK6 can, well, you can get them both in standalone, but then uh, you can use a web browser. We now have a settings page which you can select uh, which port you want to use. Actually, we don't really do the routing on, on all those ports. It's just the RK6 is merging everything together, but you can use filters to, uh, to filter out ports you don't want to use in this uh, setup. And what's the, uh, those are, those are all uh, mini, uh, mini jacks, which are the mini yeah, jack yeah. Uh, adapters. Which, which, which yeah. one do they use? Which uh, format? Because I recently they, had the Korg NTS-1 and yeah. I didn't have any of the right adapters because I had Novation. So which one do you use? The one, the Novation? Well, no, we, we use the Korg one. So the NTS one, you can connect just with an audio cable, like a stereo cable to it. 
Right. And then you will have a stereo cable, which is then a MIDI cable. Right. And okay. the adapter we have, we have a, well, we deliver them with a few of these. These are cables which are uh, uh, one and a half meter and uh, it converts directly, directly, directly from TRS A right. to DIN 5 mail. Right, and, so you're, uh, and because have, the A is the right kind, isn't it? Because some of the people you uh, early adopted yeah. used, a di used a different format. So the Korg is technically yeah. the correct one. It's just less people might have it right away. That, I suppose, is the thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and therefore we also we made a cable like this, which is actually an inverse stereo cable. So when you want to go from A to B, you can also do it with this cable. Ah, okay. But oh, actually, cool. but you, yeah. But you know, we hope actually we can push A a bit forward with this hub. <laughs> and uh, also when you use it as a USB standalone host, uh, you can make uh, MIDI connections through the USB uh, devices. So you, like uh, Arturia has TRS-B, uh, but if you want to connect an Arturia with an uh, NTS-1 via USB, you don't need the A or B, you just connect the USB. Ah, that's actually that sounds that's really. Also I could have. I just looked at the uh, Korg NTS one and reviewed it, and that, I was trying desperately to find out. The only thing I had was uh, a, an interface unit that only let me see the first port, which was not the right port on the NTS yeah, one. So yeah. this would have been perfect. So I, I see, yeah. see we've got the settings here on that. This is a web page because it's web configurable, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, we now have a, a web MIDI page which you can use to uh, to change the settings on each port so uh, I've, I've preset another one here with uh, in which I connect uh, old and new gear together um, and actually yeah when you plug the RK6 into a computer and you just go to this settings page it will read out the configuration it will look like this and we have uh, some presets uh, on the gonna RK6 which uh, you have like a boot preset. This is the one you use when you turn on the RK6, and that uh, by default that's just like a through box. But uh, there are two extra user presets, and there are 10 ROM presets, so to speak, which uh, can uh, help you connect like, uh, well, uh, Sync24 devices or uh, pocket operators or such. Because the like the RK4, the RK6 also has that clock processing uh, thing, so you can do clock dividers on each port. And in, when you have the RK6 in gate mode, you can use it to to convert MIDI clock into all kinds of different uh, signals. Wow, that's really, that's going to be really useful for triggering patterns and stuff on a modular as well, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can not only use uh, MIDI clock for triggering stuff on modular, but you can also use uh, like keys, so uh, I could define a uh, MIDI key to trigger a uh, individual output port on the RK6. So you could use it, uh, keys to do analog drum triggers, for example, as well. Oh, wow. and that will all stay in memory, so you boot it back up without having a computer involved, and yeah. everything yeah. will be. Yeah, you can save it on a boot uh, preset or one of the user presets. You actually get, you have three really uh, customizable presets, and the others are. ROM, but uh, yeah, I th most of the ROM presets are already very usable as well. Excellent. And you've got another setup. Um, so looking at the, the the products here, what do you get yeah. when you buy this? So you get the, the what you get some of the cable. What do you get if you buy the yeah. unit? Well, well, we actually we have two sort of two kits. We have one which does only the the USB uh, route, so you can use it uh, to mainly connect USB devices and TRS-A with audio if you would like. And um, the, that, that kit has, like what the basis is, is actually this here. Right. This and that. And then there's also a uh, cable kit which has four of these wires. And um, yeah, of course we have the wires uh, also individually so uh, you can expand if needed yeah maybe i mean when you want to trigger uh 10 midi devices from it or uh, control 10 midi devices from it then you will need a lot of cables but uh, um, i suspect people would like to use it to mix because the device can do that so when you've got so something like this um the bandwidth of the internal device is it is it powerful enough to be able to deal with midi 2.0 stuff when that becomes sort of on stream 
Yeah, well, actually, we haven't really found that much devices who do that. No, <laughs> not yet. Stuff. No, but we did the the Sensor More. You know, the uh, that's a USB uh, device. You know, the iPad kind of thing with uh, customizable. Uh, uh, I have it there, but I'm not sure what I will tip over if I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Ah, uh, yeah. Like okay. this one. You know. Yeah, and this one does the MPE stuff with all those uh, pressure control um, uh, extra data, and the RK6 is able to handle that very well. So, oh, brilliant! We have good hopes. Excellent. So you've also got um, another setup. So this that this is your sort of uh, this is the beauty RK06, and then you've got one actually being used in in the real world yeah. as well. So um, I think you, yeah. you were you able to pick this camera up and and show us what's going on in, in your yeah. setup, just out of interest. I'll pick it up. So like this. Okay. So here I have it uh, connected to some gear. Um, well, there's also a little uh, experimental thing here, which is uh, actually the. Oh, you, you're going to like this, Nick. It has pulse width modulation output. Ah, uh, hooray! <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, but this uh, this thing here can convert that uh, to like an average voltage level, so you can use it as control voltage. Right. So uh, I can set a port from the RK6 into. PWM mode, ah, and then okay. I can feed it to to analog devices. Like I can show you with the uh, neutron here. The sound is the neutron. Yeah. And I can do. You see the RK6 is. Well, oh, and now the LFO is getting the field. So. Okay. Yeah. So you're mapping the modulation you wheel, right? Yeah, yeah. You can also map it to breath control, for example. But the it's it's not a really uh, a, a PWM which is very high res, but for controlling, uh, for example, LFO speeds or uh, some filter intensity stuff like that, it's very usable. I wouldn't play any uh, chromatic scale on it unless you're uh, <laughs> experimental, <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, the other stuff is really fun to uh, to play around with. Um, you mentioned Sync24 in the setup as well. Have you got something going on in this particular setup with Sync24? Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, shall I again take the yeah. phone off so I can show you? Yeah. yeah. So I've here, uh, I've connected these two with uh, like one Sync24 is like you have a run signal and a clock pulse. And so you can combine, you can generate these outputs with the RK006 and you can combine them into like, for example, a 606. And then uh, you can have these uh, sync pulses uh, slave to, for example, an Ableton uh, setup. So now I'm syncing up these, uh, the 606 together with uh, stuff here on MIDI. And I can also even because I can change time base of uh, the uh, RK6, I can also generate lower pulse, which you can use to drive pocket operators in sync as well. Ah, so you've got quite a lot of, clock, like you say, the clock division and the pulse division will. Yeah. Oh, I could just tip out here that in the background. Yeah. So oh, yeah, and and the, the the pulses can be gated on uh, if you start or stop a uh, a MIDI clock, which allows very easy synchronization of these de sync-based devices with uh, with MIDI. Brilliant. And so, um, this, I mean, th this is available now, presumably. I mean, you can we can we yeah. can buy this. Um, what what uh, what's the ship? What's the cost? And uh, you know, where do people get these things? Uh, well, we, you can get it on retrokits.com. That's where we uh, sell our stuff. And uh, yeah, the, now in April, we have a bit of a, a low st uh, stock on the cables, but uh, I just got word that we're getting a load more. So uh, in a few days, we'll have uh, all of the kits available again. 
And what does the RK006 cost? And what's the retail price to you? Uh, yeah, that's uh, like varying from 130 to 160, depending on the cable kit or USB kit. Ah, okay. But that will give you two ins and 10 outputs plus all of those other modes as well. Yeah, well, it, it gives you a USB interface or it gives you a standalone USB host and it gives you a uh, MIDI to DIN sync converter and um, yeah. Lots of things. All kinds of goodies and very small format, of course, but very portable. And can you run multiples? So if you wanted to sort of chain them up, would you be able to run two oh, yeah, of them? Yeah. You could... yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, of course, because it has two MIDI inputs as well. So you could choose to route it via MIDI in and then one out, MIDI in, one out, and you still have one MIDI in left over to connect other stuff to it. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Garrett. That's, uh, that, okay. again, it's another one of those fantastic little units that you've just kind of... Uh, see. So where do you come up with, because there, there are only so many, you know, configurations. Do you, where do you get your inspiration from for these devices? Do you just sort of find a, a problem that needs to be solved and then just kind of cram it all into the smallest possible footprint? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, sort of uh, what we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have uh, you haven't seen the other side of the studio, but there's a lot of uh, stuff which needs to be connected still. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, um, and thanks for uh, joining us here. And uh, please stay tuned for even more videos. But uh, we'll see you all yeah. uh, in person, hopefully next year, uh, next year's Superbooth, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>